Good morning, how are we all? Um, happy Friday everyone, it is Friday, it's Friday and apparently you've got to get down on Friday so I've been told but who knows. Um, I'll start with my standard Friday thing which is if Friday is normally your gambling day, if it is a day where you normally get paid and then before you get home or shortly after the time you get home you've lost all your wages and you've ruined your weekend before it's even started <coughs> then this Friday do something differently do something different if you normally stop at the bookies on the way home because you've been paid and you've got cash in your pocket don't do it keep on driving if you normally go to the pub and end up playing the fruit machine and doing your bollocks don't do that give your mate to someone else just take 20 quid if you've got 20 quid in your hand you know that's going to buy you five pints of Stella as if you could still get five pints of Stella for 20 quid bloody hell um, then just take enough money because most of us won't compromise a few Friday night pints for the sake of a little gamble. Particularly when we've only got 15, 20 quid in our pocket. What's the point? We're not going to gamble it. If you normally go home and you gamble online, then do something to prevent that. Be the, tonight, let tonight be the night that you install GamStop, you self-exclude, do all the rest of it. If Friday, you've got to get down on Friday, if Friday is the night you normally you do your bollocks and you ruin the rest of your weekend, then for God's sake, do something differently this weekend. Right, now that's out of the way, my normal Friday, normally Friday evening, but it's Friday morning today, uh, my normal Friday rant is out of the way. I want to get on to the subject of today's video, which is, uh, no I'm not on coke, honestly, I don't know why I'm so awake this morning, I haven't really had any coffee yet, um, which is um, how gambling took me to the worst possible places, the worst places. And when I say this, you, you would be excused, mistaken, in thinking, you know, it's some sort of existential inner dark place that it took me to some horrible place inside of myself, inside of my own consciousness, inside of my own head, and it led me to some really dark places. And <coughs> in a sense, it did, of course, you know. Gambling is well attached to mental health, which is a subject very, very much talked about at the moment. Um, and it is very much associated with depression and, of course, suicide, which is, you know, one of the horror, well, it's obviously the worst side effects of gambling addiction but no what I want to talk to you about today is the, the physical worst places that gambling has taken me to <coughs> now I'm quite qualified to talk about this because as some of you have watched my videos for a while will know my gambling career ugh, my gambling career started as a professional fruit machine player Someone who would play fruit machines for a living, in case that wasn't self-explanatory. And such a thing does exist, um, and I made a good living off it, to be fair, for a little bit, a fair bit of time. For, you know, probably the best two years of my life, maybe, where I wasn't working at all. I had more disposable income than I've ever had. And the, but that was ultimately what led me into this, this addiction. Because, you know, I got used to the easy money and whatever the gambling in my head could offer me. Uh, and when the easy money dried up, then suddenly I, all I was left with was this gambling addiction. So I have been to a lot of gambling places. I have been to a lot of gambling establishments. And they are the most depressing, some of the worst, some of the darkest, most miserable places on earth. And so let's look at them individually. Let's look at all the places where you gamble. Now we'll skip over some of them because they're fairly self-explanatory. Motorway services. Bloody hell, I spent many, many hours of my my life in the middle of the night at the stupid hours of the morning in motorway service station playing on fruit machines. Very depressing places indeed. Amusement arcades. Now the name, amusement, it sounds like a great barrel of laughs doesn't it? But you venture into those over 18 sections, oh my god and they're just, you know, they're just dens of misery. When was the last time you ever looked around an amusement arcade, an adult area in an amusement arcade and actually saw someone that was smiling, saw someone that was actually genuinely enjoying themselves, having a good time was actually replicating, you know, all the, uh, the advertising material that the, the gambling industry will throw at you. You won't find a single one of them in an amusement arcade, and that's the seaside ones. The town centre ones are worse, and I'll tell you my experiences with the town centre ones. I worked for, uh, what did we say, about 18 months, uh, maybe slightly longer actually, in my young, much younger days in one of these, uh, these town centre amusement arcades, and they were depressing places. And, you know, they, they dress it up as, you know, being a sort of a fun entertainment centre or whatever. But ultimately, the people I saw in there, the people I saw day after day after day after day, they were 
with the exception of the few professional fruit machine players who I later became on to uh, associate with, who were going in there naturally to make some money, I saw the same people day after day who were the addicts. And there was no other label to put on them. And I, I didn't judge them on a personal level, but you, they were incredibly depressed individuals. They were people that you could set your watch by. They would always turn up at the same time. They would always play the same games. They would always basically repeat the same cycles and leave inevitably with less money than they walked in with. Even if they left with more money, you know they'd be back the next day anyway. They were dark, depressing places. There's no... If you think about it, if you try and look at the entertainment value of a, a, a you know of a, of a slot arcade, a, you know an amusement arcade in town centre. You know where's where's the amusement? When when do you ever see people enjoying themselves in there? Now ultimately that was all sort of a, a build up to the to the big two. Now the first one is obvious. It's something I've spoken about so much recently that you're probably bloody bored about me hearing me bang on about it. And that is the bookies. The bookies. Now weirdly, I, one thing to thank the bookies for is bookmakers were one of the reasons uh, that I, I really decided that I, I wanted to quit gambling. Um, and not because of a big loss and not because of the, you know, the addiction to fob tees, blah, 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 all the rest of it. It was because one day I was in a bookies on the high street and I don't even think I was playing, I think I was in there with a mate. And I just looked around and if you, if you do gamble in bookmakers, if you go go on one today and you don't heed my Friday advice, god damn you, if you don't heed my Friday advice and you find yourself in the bookies later today, then have a look around, genuinely, have a look around at the people in there. And again, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions on the people themselves, but do any of them look content? Do any of them look happy? Do any of them look like they're enjoying themselves? Of course the answer is no, they're not, because they're all there for the same purpose. I said in my last video, people don't wander into a bookmaker's and play fob tees as a, as a source of entertainment. There are entertaining sources of gambling. I don't, don't, I don't doubt that, that some, some forms of gambling can be entertaining and you can derive entertainment from it. Obviously, if you're a gambling addict, you, you can't and you shouldn't, but there is entertaining forms of gambling. Fob tees are not an entertaining form of gambling. And if you are playing a fob tee, the chances are, well, I didn't say the chances are, then, then you almost certainly have a problem. And you don't want to be, if you're surrounding yourself with these people, it becomes almost the norm. If you think about this, and I think about this in, in two ways. Sorry, this video is a bit unstructured, my apologies. But I think about this in two ways. I think about my gambling days, when rather than spend time with old friends, you know, people who are, you know, people in business, people who I have a lot in common with, people I used to work with, people with families, all the rest of it. I didn't spend time with them. I didn't even spend as much time with my wife as I probably spent with the random gambling people. I mean, I all know the random gambling people, don't we? They generally, do you generally talk inanely about whatever form of gambling it is? The person on the fob tee next to you is always there playing fishing friends, your fucking knife, Horace or whatever. And all, some, you know, some person there and you exchange vague pleasantries, how's it paying, oh not bad, you know, all the rest of it, oh 100 quid yesterday, oh did you, yeah, yeah, oh, 50 quid down a day, oh yeah, okay. You got those people, you got the people with, uh, and I'm not making stereotypes here, you got the people with appalling personal hygiene, and this is something I learned from my days as a, an arcade manager, I suppose, is some addiction and Person and, and self-care obviously go hand in hand, but there is no more obvious outward sign of this than personal hygiene. These are people that, if you you weren't associated with, you would probably keep a bit of a physical distance from, not because of their character, but because some of them stink. You know, it's an unpopular opinion, but some of them do. I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we've been sat at a fob tea or maybe at a fruit machine or some form of physical gambling machine or whatever. And someone's come and stood next to you, normally some sort of knitted woolen jumper, and they've made you feel really quite ill. But you're, you're deeply invested in this machine, you're doing your bollocks, so you can't get up and leave. So now you have to leave, hold your breath while frantically smashing the start button, just willing yourself to get something back. 
you know, not even at this stage you've given up chasing your losses. You just want to get some money back just so you can leave Stig of the Dump next year and go and get some fresh air. But we, we commit ourselves to spending time around these people and what you have to think and what I thought, and this is why I'm going back to my boogies thing, is I thought, you know what? I don't want to be one of these people. I don't want to be one of these people that people, you know, they do judge. You know, we're all human, we all judge people. I don't want to be one of these people that in 30 years' time is start, you know, still shuffling around playing fruit machines or playing bob tees or casino games or whatever. I don't want to be one of these people that someone gives a sideways glance to and goes, my God, you stink, Phil. Obviously, they might not know I was called Phil, unless I become a mega YouTube sensation by then and everyone knew who I was. But, um, yeah, it seems unlikely. Don't be, don't be one of those people. And like I say, next time you're in a fob tea, yeah, but fob tees, next time you're in a boogies, just look around. It's one of the most depressing places on earth. And that's whether you win or lose, it doesn't matter. The last one I want to talk about, and this is kind of what this video is leading up to, sorry it's been rambly, casinos. Now, casinos lied to me. I was quite deep into my gambling career before I ever went to a casino. And casinos lied to me. I'd seen casinos in the movie, I'd seen James Bond go into casinos, I'd seen, you know, all the glitz and glamour, you know, the shiny gold roulette wheel, the glamorous women bringing you drinks and shaking not stirred and, uh, I don't know, people pulling handles on the side of slot machines and going ding, ding, ding and all that bollocks, right? I knew it wasn't going to be exactly like that. But the first time I went into a casino, I was drunk. <laughs> I was drunk. Yeah, that's not the point. Um, I was... It's just, it's just a giant amusement arcade. And rather than having a fob tea, where you're watching a roulette wheel go round and round, which obviously aren't rigged, they're completely random. I'm joking, joking. Um, you're watching a wheel go round, you're watching a real person spin it, and maybe they've got a waistcoat on. And that's it. That's the difference. And somehow this is now glamorous. It's now like it's supposed to be kind of a fun, trendy place to hang out. It's supposed to, place you guys, supposed to go with the boys and go down the casino. and You wouldn't all get drunk at the bar, go to a club come out at two o'clock in the morning and go, right, let's go to the boogies, lads. Let's go and play the fob tees. <laughs> you wouldn't do it, would you? But for some reason, it seems like the perfect per post-bar, post-club place to go. It seems like a kind of a fun extension of a night out. And it's not. It's a giant glorified amusement arcade with alcohol. Why do you think these places are open so late? It's because they've somehow managed to convince the government, God bless Tony Blair, they somehow managed to convince the government that opening 24 hours or opening until 6 o'clock in the morning or whatever and serving alcohol around high stakes gambling is allowed because it's a fun social environment. I'm sure there's people who wander in a casino, maybe have a few quid and wander out and go, yeah, that was all right. But the vast majority of people in casinos and just maybe a slightly better dressed version of the people in the boogies or the people in the arcades, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. We talk so much about fob tea regulation. We talk so much about, you know, oh, we should stop online gambling. We should stop this, that, and the other. And, you know, there's definitely arguments for all of those things. But it's amazing how casinos seem to get away with supplying you with alcohol, letting you gamble ridiculous amounts of money. They've got cash points in there, and obviously you get cash back and all the rest of it. So you can kind of lose as much money as you want. But yet they somehow maintain a sort of a glamorous, fun social image, which let's face it, isn't carried by amusement arcades or, or bookies. Everyone sees them kind of the dingy dens of iniquity that they are. But somehow casino, casinos lie to you. You walk in, you go, oh, look, isn't it big? And it is big, normally they're quite big. And you go and sit down at the blackjack table and for about three seconds, you feel like James Bond. And then you suddenly realize that you're just playing the same game as you could be playing online or in the bookies or whatever. And you're still gambling. You're still gambling, you're still amongst the same people, you know, and, and doing the same thing. You're just somehow made to feel better about yourself. Bookies thrive on this. Bookies thrive on, on you getting drunk and going there at the end of the night. This is why they open so late. They fall into the same category in my head as strip clubs, in the fact that you wouldn't probably wander into a strip club sober, would you? And if someone said, oh, look, there's a little shop around the corner, you know, you go in there and you pay your 50 quid and there's a naked woman in there for you, you'd be like, that's a bit weird, isn't it? You wouldn't, you wouldn't walk into that during the day, would you? But for some reason, at two o'clock in the morning, after a few beers, 
you know, it's, it seems almost like a sort of a fun, social, glamorous thing to do. And casinos and strip clubs work in the same way. They dress it up. They feed you this, this illusion. They feed you this, this, this big thing, this, this, you know, okay, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. You know, with the casinos, they feed you this idea of a big win, of this, this massive, massive happy ending. It's much like going into a strip club and throwing money at it. That happy ending never comes. And on that note, I've made myself cringe so hard, I'm going to, um, I'm going to leave you. But anyway, enjoy your Friday. Remember the rules. If Friday is your day for doing your bollocks, don't do your bollocks today. Do something different. At least wait till Sunday to do your bollocks, because uh, you know, at least then you've enjoyed your weekend. But no, seriously, try and do something different this weekend. If you want to do something productive today, before you finish work, then sign up for GamStop. Get a Monzo account or one account that allows you to block trans gambling transactions. If FobT is your thing, sort out some passport size photos. They don't actually need to be ones from the, the booths. Just get someone print them on some paper and uh, get ready to take them in. Get some self exclusion forms from your bookies. And do something different. But, you know, do something today and have a fucking brilliant weekend, everyone. Have a great one. It's great to be back talking to you guys again. Thanks so much for all your support on the last video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm losing my voice. So I'm going to let you get on with your day. Have a great gamble free one, guys. Bye.